After my sister saw a Campbell's commercial, she managed to convince my mom to buy a can of tomato soup to dip with our grilled cheese sandwiches. When we got home, she pried the can open, poured a puddle of red into a bowl, and placed it in the microwave for a few minutes so that it would come out steaming, like the one on television. We laid triangular cuts of white bread and cheese in the toaster oven, then waited until the timer went off. Eager to taste, we slurped down the goop despite the protest of our scalded tongues. It reminded me of gritty, watered-down ketchup. We nibbled through the next few bites, trying to convince ourselves that the meal had satisfied our palates. When my mom asked me if I liked it, I glanced over at my sister's half-eaten grilled cheese and said, Yeah, we have never eaten tomato soup since. The remaining cans stayed in the pantry until they expired. In elementary school, my mom made me spring rolls, noodles, rice, and soups for lunch. I loved my lunches, but I didn't necessarily feel comfortable eating them around my friends. One day, I was packed rice and co. We were all talking over the screaming lunch lady. Some kid was vomiting in the corner. You know, the usual day. This kid nicknamed Lips looked over my shoulder and asked me, What is that? It's a Vietnamese fish. It looks weird. And a friend of mine through sixth grade had Kraft Singles Cheese Sandwiches every single day. It was gross. She was never able to finish it. Throughout the last year of middle school, I did the exact same thing as Anne, except my cheese was not processed, and there was a piece of ham and a piece of lettuce, even though I picked it out most of the time. As my sister and I grew older, our palates changed. While picking off the condiments to our dinners, we thought of trying new foods like the refined, westernized ethnic cuisine introduced to us on the cooking channel. The new concepts looked so delicate. Each ingredient thought to elegantly contrast one another, yet so culturally unstable. The transplanted dishes were altered to suit the American palate and aesthetic. So white people would be able to enjoy their diluted broths, without foreign spices standing their throats. Is any ethnic food authentic in the West? The co I had in sixth grade was not traditional co. My mom had used salmon instead because there isn't any fresh galop here. Although, salmon co was just as tasty. I was also told that my grandmother reinvented soon. There wasn't any raw coconut milk, so she improvised, braised it in soda instead, and it was divine. I had always looked at this as a negative component, concerned that the authentic part of me was drowning, gradually losing fragments from the vocabulary of my first known language. Both sides of this hybrid identity are composed so differently. They are seen as two separate ingredients, but could never be isolated from their duet. Together, their performance creates an individual.